Okay, today we're going to talk about how to charge a Linux heat pump in the heating mode. Uh, most manufacturers will tell you that charging a heat pump in the heating mode is not possible. Uh, here at Linux, we tend to use thermal expansion valves at the indoor coil and the outdoor coil. We do not use accumulators, which allows us to be able to charge by subcooling, not only in the cooling mode, but also in the heating mode. So today, that's what we're going to do. Uh, I already have my manifold gauges hooked up to the heat pump. I have it running in the heating mode. And this is a two-ton system. I'm going to refer to the chart here. This is an XP15024. And I have it matched here with a CX3438 coil, which for heating, my subcooling requires 15 degrees. Now, if you notice up here, that's plus or minus five. So uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 degree subcooling is is what I'm looking for but I really want to be closer to the 15 so I've taken my temperature probe I have connected it to my liquid line okay and it's reading about 84.7 85 degrees so when I look at my manifold I don't pay any attention to the pressure out here around the outer perimeter I'm looking at the temperature rating here for 410A because this is a 410A machine. And if I look at that, it says my liquid line pressure is at about 82. Okay, so I take 82 from 85 and I only have about, you know, three degrees of subcooling. So in this case, I would need to add charge to increase my subcooling. It had my subcooling been higher, I would have had to remove charge. So I've got my refrigerant tank hooked up. I have it on a scale so I can tell how much I end up putting in for my documentation. And I will slowly add some R R410A to the machine. Now I only want to do this in small increments. I don't want to do a lot. And then I want to let the machine run for a little bit. Uh, before I check my subcooling again. And you continue this process until you get to the 15 degree subcooling. If I try and dump in a bunch all at once and I get in too big a hurry, I will guarantee you, you will overcharge the machine. So we just want to do it very slowly, make a small adjustment, let it run for about 10 minutes, and then come back and check it again. Okay, so we've waited about 10 minutes, and now I'm going to look at my temperature on my gauge again and as you can see I'm, I'm running at about 100 degrees on my liquid line. I'm going to go back to my temperature meter and I'm still running about 85 degrees on my temperature meter. So I am currently running right at 15 degrees of subcooling which is where we want to be. You know this is a very easy and efficient way of charging a heat pump. Uh, again we can do this in the cooling mode or the heating mode and it's no problem whatsoever. The only thing you have to be careful with is make sure that your indoor coil is matched properly to our heat pump because the volume ratio between the two coils is very important. 